Well, good morning or good evening, depending on which part of the world you're tuning in with us from. And welcome to Break with the Guy Who Sews. And I am super excited to have another Aussie join me. Um, it is Nicole Reed from Davana Lee Designs. I hope I got the channel name right. Um, so do you want to say g'day to everybody? That might be just the easiest way of doing it. And just tell us a little bit more about yourself, your channel and what you do. Hey, hi everybody. My name's Nicole and uh, as Sean just said, I'm from Devonally Design Studio. My channel is all about multi-crafting. So you, at any given day, you can find some sort of craft being done on my channel. Um, I post daily videos, except for Sundays, I post a short and that is the challenge video where I put out a prompt for people to either cross stitch something or make something. And I, I let you know on Sunday what that is. Um, other than that, I just basically cross stitch. I do quilting. My trade is long arm quilting and that's predominantly my business. And I do sewing tutorials every Wednesday on the channel as well. And that'll be useful things. It might be handbags. It might be um, things for to help you out with your cross stitching and all that sort of stuff. And uh, yeah, that's basically me in a nutshell. So it sounds like you are a very, very busy lady, which I think is awesome. And it's fun that you do so many different crafts. Um, I've done a little bit of diamond painting, um, like you're probably showing a little bit that you're going to do tonight. Um, but primarily, I am a quilter. That's kind of my my craft. My uh, my wife knits, um, and I've done a little bit of um, ceramic painting as well, which I think some people have seen on the channel in the past. And I really, really need to finish my. Um, plate that I've been painting for the last three years because I need to get it in the state fair in September but whether it'll be this year or 2027 who knows um but yeah it's a lot of yeah I I'm just yeah very very excited to have you here but I'm just going to say good morning or good evening to everybody at here real quick um because we have a nice little crowd here so far and I just appreciate everybody that hops on um each and every Saturday morning I'm just assuming it's morning um for anyone who, in the U.S. um it looks like this lady Nicole Reed is here um, Pam from the Emptiness Crafter is here, and it's always good to see you, Pam, and she'll be joining me next week. Uh, Kathy Klein, um, Katie Crafts is here. Good morning. Fallon from So Be It Quilts. And let's see, Elena is here, Martha's Creative Life. Good morning, Carrie. Good evening to Janet Johnson. She is from Western Australia, and I think she was the one that introduced me to you. Um, okay. Not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure it was um, Janet told me about you. Um, Wombo, Wombat Hollow Crafts says good evening from Southern Highlands in New South Wales. She's not far, um, relatively speaking, from where I grew up. I was um, a Tamworth boy in New South Wales, which is north of, between Sydney and Brisbane. So I'm probably halfway. I would have grown up about halfway between you and Wombat. Um, <laughs> well, so that is Gail. Just, Gail. Okay. I am terrible of names. I try to remember them, but I can't remember names at the best of times. So, um, you know, it is what it is. Joyce Baker is here. Good morning, Donna from Handmade by Ying. Um, Martha, Donna, Fallon all have channels. Um, feel free to drop your links in, although I'm sure one of my mods will happily do that for me. Good morning, Cheryl. It's good to see you. Cynthia Maria Field is here. Um, let's see. Did I miss anybody? Leslie G. And if I did miss someone, um, I apologize. It's hard to keep up with the chat. It's alive as so many different moving parts, as Nicole well knows. And how you how um, you and everybody else does it by themselves, I have no clue. Like, you know, my, my hat is off to you. I say that a lot, but it really does. You know, I, I mean that 100%. So um, do you want to tell us a little bit about what you're going to work on today? Because it is after 10. If you look at the clock behind Nicole, it's showing at 10.05, and that is not a.m., that is p.m., she um, <laughs> graciously um, agreed to come on in the middle of the night for us. So thank you for that. But you want to show us just a little um, bit about what you got to do today because your sewing area said it's kind of dark at this time of night. Yes. Yeah. My, my sewing area is quite dark at night. It's great during the day. It works perfectly. But this time of night, it's a little bit dark um, and my eyesight's not that great for sewing. So I don't want to unpick at all. So I thought tonight I would do some diamond painting. Um, I'm going to hold up what I'm working on. This is um, called Frost Dragonling. It is by Jasmine Beckett Griffith, and I got it from Craftably, which is a, um, a diamond painting place that is in the United States. Where in the United States? I'm not 100% sure because this was actually a gift, but that is sort of where I'm at it at the moment. Um, 
we're starting to see a face, which is great. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm going to get some diamonds down on that tonight because I'm lit up for that. And, um, yeah, because all my studio lights sort of point over this way as well. So Nice. And then just um, how long do you think, you know, ballpark figure, how long have you spent on that so far? Uh, this painting I started in uh, 2021 and I'd done a small section down the bottom um, in the right-hand corner. And then um, I just recently set up my station and I'll just move my camera so you can see it. So I just recently set up this station here. And it's just a foldable table um, that's got a jigsaw puzzle um, board on it. And so this will this holds it really well and it stops everything from moving. Um, so this month there's a channel called Add More Zest uh, and Rebecca does a June waffle. And basically she posts a video every day and does a section. So she divides her diamond painting up into 30 um, sections, equal sec sections, and then spins the wheel each day. And then that number is what the section that she'll do. Um, and Gail from Wombat Hello Crafts put me onto it that it was happening um, because I don't often watch her channel a lot, but I do go there from time to time. And I thought, you know what, it's a good time to pull this out and get some um, drills down on it. So every day I do about an hour and 45 on it. So by the end of the month, it'll be finished. Oh, very nice. Yeah, we bought um, some diamond paintings when the pandemic started. Um, my wife and the exchange student we had living with at the time bought a few. I think there was one with cats on it and they finished that. And there was another one that I think I either started or finished, I can't remember. And then we got one that was like a personalized picture of the three of us at a pumpkin patch. And I'm about a quarter of the way through, but I haven't done that in quite some time. So I do need to pull that out on occasion and um, actually finish it. But I seem all my free time seems to be um, dedicated to quilting these days, but it might be something I can take to the office and sit there in my cubicle at lunchtime and do, you know, so may maybe that's something I can work on. Cause I mean, I'd love to do my painting as well, but um, I don't know, sitting in an office painting at lunch would be the easiest thing to do. So Marie no, Johnson. I don't expect it would be. <laughs> no. Um, Oh, wow. Marie John says, I love diamond painting. I'm doing a huge Wizard of Oz for my bestie. Oh, that'd be fun to see a picture of. Is there any way that you can get a picture to one of us um, so we can see that? That'd be fun because as um, a lot of my viewers know already, I've been working on a Wizard of Oz um, quilt, quilt top. So, um, yeah, it'd be fun to see the diamond painting. of that. That'd be a lot of fun. Amy C says, good morning, everyone. I'll be listening as she gets ready to go to the Saturday sampler at her local quilt shop. She does. They have a really cool program down there where they um, – I think it's like monthly they go and do like, a, I think it's like a block in a month or something like that down in Atlanta. Um, if I lived a little closer, um, you know, I'd go, but it's like a day, a, well and truly a day's drive for me to get to Atlanta. So I won't be visiting anytime soon. Um, Chrissy Stitches says, hello from Bathurst, New South Wales, not too far from Tamworth. I know exactly where Bathurst is. Um, my father grew up in Lithgow, which is about 45 minutes away. So yeah, we've been to Bathurst many many times and then if you're a motor racing fan at all in australia um you definitely know bathurst basically it, it is the indianapolis 500 of australian motor racing so um but today i'm going to work on my t-shirt one of my commission t-shirt quilts and i've already put the um the top border on and the sashing in between some of the shirts i'm not awake yet um poor nicole's been up all day and um I'm just waking up and the coffee's slowly kicking in, but it's not quite um, not quite there yet. So we're going to continue working on this, trying to piece this all together, and we'll see how far we get. I've already done this row, and I'm just going to put the sashing on the bottom, and then I've done row number two. I did this all last night before I fell asleep. So we'll, we will just continue on in our merry way of that one there. So do you want to tell us That's a little bit fabulous. more? Fabulous. Yes, thank you. Yeah, and I've we were talking a little bit before um, we got on live that about t-shirt quilts, and um, I think it's one of those things that you either love or hate. And I think the reason a lot of people don't like them so much is getting that fusible interfacing yeah. on the back because it takes eighteen forevers. But my solution to that is run out and get if you can run out and get yourself a steam press because it'll make a huge difference. I mean, instead of taking fifteen minutes per shirt. It takes me about two. 
Yeah, that, that's the biggest thing with T-shirt um, quilts is that interfacing. And if you don't have a steam press, yeah. Um, I <laughs> used a steam press for um, my bag making and everything because, as anybody knows who's made bags before, there is a heck of a lot of interfacing and uh, different stabilisers and whatnot in hand bag making. So, yeah. Nice. Um, Leslie's asking Marie where she got the Wizard of Oz diamond painting. Yes, I'd like to know that too because I may have to go out and get one of those. <laughs> so we will see. Um, uh, from Diamond Art Club DAC. Okay. She says they're pricey, but they have beautiful designs. Yeah, sometimes it's just worth it to pay a little extra and get something that's really, really nice. So, mm. and that's strange coming from me because I'm like one of the, I like being very frugal. Okay. Yeah, Diamond Art Club has some amazing um, pieces on there, and and okay. craftably, and there's Diamond uh, Dreamer Designs, I think, is the other one. Um, there's quite a number of um, premium diamond plays, a uh, diamond art that you can okay. get from different places. Nice. I'll have to look into that, but I need to finish the one that I started first before I even try and attempt doing something else. So. <laughs> That I try so to neat. only work on one piece at a time too, so. Yeah. With quilting, it's different. I have about seven or eight projects, I think, going on at once. And I'm trying very hard with, not to. Sorry? With my cross stitch, I've got about 55 things on the go. That's okay. <laughs> there's, there's and some quilting's people... the same. <laughs> oh, don't, I mean, you know, I think some people make you know make it where uh, they feel bad about that but mm. my my thing is this is you know it's really is this is your fun time you do what you want I mean and my mindset is that you know sometimes I'll come home and I want something simple where it's not a lot of brain space so I have a scrappy project I can do I have mm. the puzzle mystery quilts by cotton cuts that I can do because those are all pre-cut I just got to pull it out and sew it the the gnomes that cotton cuts produces same sort of thing they're just um pre-cut squares and half square triangles so i can do something you know fairly simple or, and then there's sometimes where i want to do something complicated and challenging to test my skills and that's when i bring out my wizard of Oz, my mythical darks and, and that sort of thing there so i think it's great that you have multiple stuff but if you're someone that needs to do you know one project at a time that's also yeah. great as well you know you you do you um yeah. I, i'm not i'm not here to tell you what to do i'm not the quilt police um <laughs> and i'm not here to, i'm not definitely not going to judge anybody good good afternoon Ange. it is good to see you she says hi sean nicole great to see you um shannon from slate arts is here good morning it's good to see you as well did i miss anybody leslie g i think we said good morning to you earlier um i think i caught everybody um so yeah i'm working on my t-shirt quilt for anyone that just built it in and Nicole is doing her diamond painting and trying not to fall asleep because it's quite late where she is. Um, it's yeah, well, all good. I had a nap. I, I, I restructured my day today to be on US time. So oh, nice. I took it nice and easy. And then um, I went to sleep at 6.30 tonight for a couple of hours. And, yeah, so I've got my – I've, I've just readjusted my times today. And the oh, beauty nice. of – for me is I work from home. So if I need to have a nap during the day, if it catches up with me on Monday, it doesn't matter. I can have a nap. Oh, that's nice. So do you do craft, like um, long arming and that sort of thing? Is that your primary um, source of, okay. I didn't know if you had like a day job and this was like a side business for you or this was your um, main yeah. source of income. Um, you, YouTube, long arming is my day job. Right. Um, yeah. So that's my day job, but I do it from home. Um, I've got where I, where I'm sitting now is where I do a lot of my filming and everything for YouTube. Okay. And down the other end, I've got the same amount of space again, which is about six or seven meters. Um, and I've got an Avanti Q18 down there. Um, okay. And I've got like a whole uh, whole wall of bolted fabric and stuff like that for backings and all that sort of stuff. So that's what I predominantly do, do during the day. Um, but with the economy, how it is at the moment, obviously crafts are the first thing because I don't know if a lot of people know the price of fabrics and everything in Australia are just ridiculous. But 
a lot of hobbies go by the wayside and people start to tighten their belts and everything. We've had a lot of interest rates rises and stuff like that. So I've noticed that there's been a little bit of a downturn in the quilting. So a couple of years ago, um, I decided, well, uh, five years ago, I decided to uh, start my YouTube channel predominantly was because I wanted somewhere for my kids to go and learn and sew. If, cause I didn't have time, I was very busy with the quilting. And then, um, from that, I had a lot of people that were following me on Instagram and on Facebook that were saying they wish they lived closer so they could do classes and all that sort of stuff. And that's when I decided that I was going to um, do sewing tutorials and all that sort of and just go headlong into it. And, um, yeah, so I've made YouTube my full-time job as well as the quilting, and I just sort of structure my day that way. Yeah, that's awesome. Um that you're able to do that. I mean, I, I have a full-time job outside of YouTube. YouTube is uh, my side, you know, my, it's really my fun time. I do it because, you know, I really, really enjoy it. And it would be wonderful if I could do it as a full-time thing. That would be wonderful. But um, realistically, that's a very, very long way off. Um, mm -hmm. So, but yeah, I mean, I think it's great that, you know, there are folks out there that can do that and, you know, yeah um, uh, I, I'm very lucky and very very blessed that my husband is very accommodating and he said you know like it, it's great it's something that you can do I can still be home for the kids yeah. um, you know like and that's why I ended up with the long arm because I used to actually work in a, a quilting shop and okay. um, she decided to close and he said look I'll buy you one you can still quilt and you don't have to look for another job you'll be home for the kids because um, my husband at that stage was doing fly in, fly out, um, although he was close enough to drive in, drive out. Um, so, yeah, so it was he was away a lot. So it was a way for me to um, bring extra income into the house without having to leave the house. And so, yeah, I've worked from home for the last 13 years. That's wonderful. And, I mean, yeah, yeah. when you talk about the kids and that, I mean, daycare, and childcare, I, I don't know what it is in Australia, but I mean, it's it is not cheap. I, I yeah, I have a colleague who has a young daughter, and I think he said it's like sixteen or seventeen hundred dollars a month for childcare. So yeah, when you think about that, I mean, you know, unless you've got a really well-paying job, I mean, that takes up a lot of your income. So yeah, you might as well stay home and find something that, um, yeah, you can make a little bit of money at home. So yeah, you know, I I think it's wonderful. Uh, the quilting compound has hopped in. It's good morning. Um, Chalet, um, I was I think someone told me it was Shill a week or two ago, but it was Chalet, I think. If I'm mispronouncing that, I apologize. Um, I'm still trying to learn everybody's names. Good morning, Dawn. It is good to see you. Uh, Jeannie E is here as well. And Mona did what is also here as well. She was on um, the channel here, I don't know, was it a month or two ago? I, the, the year is flying by so quickly. Um, I can't believe it's, you know, the middle of June already. Uh, Pam says child care is very expensive here now. I, yeah, I can make everything's expensive in Australia. Um, Nicole was saying a little bit ago that um, the fabric's expensive in Australia. It's what, between like 25 and $40 a meter? 30, 35. 35, yeah, okay. it, depends on, it depends on the fabric too. Like not all fabrics are up in that $30 mark, but there are some fabrics up there. Um, a lot of them are around the 25, 27 mark. Um, if you go to places like Spotlight and, and whatnot, it's a little bit, as we were saying earlier, it's a little bit cheaper um, yeah. if you can find it. <laughs> yeah. It's so disorganised. Yeah, so Spotlight for our um, US and Canadian um, and UK, um, anyone not in Australia, basically, um, it is very similar to um, Joanne uh, would be the, it's Joanne would be the US equivalent. Um, but they, and we'll talk about this earlier, and it might just be the two stores that we go to, but I very much doubt it. Um, the fabric, the bolts are just kind of willy nilly anywhere. Um, if you need, if you're OCD, like I tend to be, and you want um, organization and everything else where you can go in, find what you want, and then leave, um, Spotlight is probably not your best option. Um, it's just. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to tell them this story? I think they'll get a kick out of this. If you tell them the story about you trying to find the um the toy fill or poly fill that you're looking for the other day. The other week I went to um Spotlight and I was looking for um toy fill. I couldn't find it anywhere. 
and I approached this young girl that was working and um, I said oh can you tell me where um the toy fell is and she goes it's in the craft section and I sort of just stood there and looked at her as if to say I'm in a craft store <laughs> <laughs> where would it be if it's in the craft section and I know that spotlight has different sections and all the rest of it but um yeah and I, I went looking for it I could not find it I had to go back and and find her again because she was the only one that was not busy on the floor and um ask her again and then I finally found it it took a while but I found it in the end <laughs> okay. I know pe people gotta love, still... gotta love spotlight yeah, um, Dawn says, what a strange business model, the spotlight. Yeah, it's just, it's it's strange. Um, I mean, Joanne's can be a little disorganized on occasion, but for the most part, when I go in there, I mean, it's it's pretty well organized. I mean, the bolts are on the, on the shelves where they're supposed to be. Um, yeah, it's just a, a whole different thing. Um, did someone drop Nicole's link in? Because if they didn't, I can duck over there real quick and grab it. I'm getting very distracted this morning, but you know, it's just one of those things. Um, t -t 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 -t. All right. It's all good. It, we, we all get like that sometimes. And oh, yeah. it, is, it is very early in the morning. Like I need at least two cups of coffee in the morning to get going. Okay. So that's, that's my excuse because I've only had one. Um, I drank one and then um, it was time to go live. So let's make sure that link works. Oh, nope. What happened here? It's it's come up on. I've got my phone here, and it's come up on the screen. Yeah, but the one the link I put didn't work. Okay, that's okay. We'll we'll sort it out. That's all good. Um, I'll just email you all my links, and you can just pop it in your description if the, that's I, easier. No, I I've got it here. Just bear with me a second. There it is. Okay, so that one works. Okay, so what I just put in um, will work nicely. So if you need Nicole's link, it is in the chat. It's also in the description of the video. Um, so if you need it, it'll be there as well. And if you haven't checked out Nicole's videos, please do so um, afterwards and check it out. She has a lot of fun stuff. She does a lot of quilting. Um, she has live replays, kind of like what I do as well. So you can... Um, if you like, you know, a lot of people love my accent and hers is very similar to mine. Um, so, yeah, if you get sick of listening to me for a while or you just want to hear a female version, um, you know, you can definitely head over and check it out. And she, yeah, she just has a lot of fun stuff. And I just really enjoyed um, watching her channel and getting to know her a little bit better. And I just thought it'd be fun to have her come join me for a little while and um, hang out with me as well. So um, let's see. I definitely do have a lot of stuff on there. So if you like cross stitch, I've got um, on Mondays and Fridays. Mondays, I generally do like a, um, I talk about what I've worked on in the past week and plans and all that sort of stuff. And I also produced a um, magazine called Down the Rabbit Hole, Cross Stitch and Needlework magazine. And uh, we've been doing that for about, uh, this is our third volume, I think we're at now. So, and that's a seasonal magazine. So. There's a lot of talk about that on Mondays and we do a little bit of a stitch with me. So I'm working on a project and people are watching what I'm doing. They usually stitch along with me. Um, Tuesdays at the moment, I've got diamond painting going up, but there is discussions about doing um, like a live stream that goes all day where we hyper-focus on our projects and talk for 15 minutes while we're live. It's a big thing over in the booktube community at the moment and um, I've had a lot of success with crafters coming over to my booktube channel. And, um, yeah, so we're looking at doing that on Tuesdays. Then every Wednesday, and this is all Australian Eastern Standard Time, so take it a day back <laughs> for the US. Um, on Wednesdays I do sewing tutorials and then Thursdays we have our live stream and then Fridays we have another stitch with me. And then on Saturday, we have what I call slow stitching Saturday. And I have a wheel that I spin my um, projects up and that's what I'll work on. So it can be anything from English paper piecing right through to Sashiko. So anything that's done by hand, basically. Nice. And I, I see those shorts every week and it's always fun to see the, the um, anim animation of the, the dice rolling and everything else. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's great that you do so many different things. I mean, you really have something there for everybody and it's a good way for us to if we want to branch out and do a different 
um, craft, I mean, Nicole's pretty much doing it all. I mean, there's not much that she's, I guess you don't knit or crochet much, right? I don't knit, but I actually am in the process of teaching myself to crochet. I can read patterns and everything because I grew up around knitters and crocheters, but I never learned how to do it. Um, I was too I was too much of a tomboy. I wanted to get out yeah, outside and all that sort of stuff. I didn't want to be sitting inside with knitting needles and, and crochet hooks. Um, and I'm sort of kicking myself because my grandmother was a seamstress and I didn't learn to sew from her. I actually taught myself to sew later. Like I did do some things with her, but I taught myself to quilt and everything later on in life, um, right. even though I've been crafting since I was eight years old. Um but now I'm teaching myself how to do um, crochet. So I'm in the midst of making a daisy daisy granny squares and sewing them together to make a blanket. Um, but it's funny because a lot of stuff you watch on YouTube, you've got to be careful what you're watching to learn how to do it because there's American um, terminology, then there's English terminology, and you can sometimes end up with a mess <laughs> if you're yes. not sure. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's um it's like that with a lot of stuff. Like um I even notice like with music, you know, I don't know if you're musically inclined to learn how to play an instrument at all. And like because like in Australia and I think it's also England, you know, you have your your crotchets, your minims, semi breeze and all that sort of stuff. Here in in the US, it's all um quarter notes, sixteenth notes, eighth notes, and that sort of thing there. It's a whole different language. Thank goodness you, you know, all you have to do is get the sheet music and just sit there and read it. But um yeah, that kind of threw me off when I got over here and they were talking about quarter notes and 16th notes. And I'm like, what are you all talking about? <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a whole it's different, like a different language. language. <laughs> yeah, it was totally different. I was like, you know, yeah, I always told us in music class that, you know, like you, know, you can read sheet music and it doesn't matter what language you're speaking because it's you just read the music. And I'm like, you know, case in point, here you go. So, um all right, so we've got some more comments as well. Janet says she'd like to try cross stitch, just finding the time. Yeah, I've been kind of interested in that too. And um, there's some really cool cross stitch patterns out there. There's a lady um, in Australia, I think it's like fan fan girl stitches or something. She has some really really cool designs. Um, I think I've seen her. Yeah, I think I'll have to go look it up somewhere. But yeah, she's got some really fun designs, kind of like, you know, with the superheroes and TV and movies and everything else. And she has some really, really, I think she's somewhere in Queensland, if I remember correctly. Um, but yeah, she has some fun stuff. But I, as much as I want to go try cross stitch and everything else, it's like, do I really need to go out and get a new craft that I don't have enough time for? So. But the beauty of cross stitch, as you were saying before, you could take that to work because you don't need to do a big project. You can have little projects like this one. So th this was, you know, this was a couple of weeks, just putting a couple of stitches in every now and again. And before you know it, you've got it finished. You've got to turn it up the right way. Um, so it's a little uh, Halloween piece. Well, you're in Australia, so it's supposed to be upside down, right? Yeah, right. That's it. <laughs> We'll, we'll go with that. Keeping it real, keeping it real. <laughs> we'll keep it real here on the guy who sews. Um, but yeah, it's funny that you're just saying that because I figure, you know, maybe I'll finish my diamond painting and then, you know, that might be something I'll tackle. Uh, I think Fallon said that she almost bought a kit um, for cross stitching at Hobby Lobby the other day. Um, and I'm probably missing a whole bunch of stuff. I just love seeing all the chat, like everybody just interacting is wonderful. Um, I think we've talked. Okay, Rebecca says she needs to get a pretty good magnifier to cross stitch. Yeah, I need to go find some reading glasses too because my... I, I, I don't get a magnifier because I can't handle weight on my head or okay. on, my, on the bridge of my nose. So I um, got these, these ones here are tinted a little bit because I use them for diamond painting. Um, okay. But if I put them on tonight, I won't be able to see the screen because I get... Um, it just magnifies it and it takes the strain off your eyes and there's a tint on it because I have all the lights going. So I've got a light yeah. board underneath this shining up at me. Um, but I have another pair that I use for cross stitch and I just take them off. They're a magnification of three and I can see 36 count with them quite easily. And that's oh, nice. very, very tiny, tiny little holes. So it, 
definitely grab yourself a pair of readers. You just get them from, um, like here in Australia, we get them from the chemist or the what we call the cheap shops like Wayne's World and places like that. I guess that would be the Dollar Tree or somewhere like that. Yeah, yeah, Dollar um, Tree, Dollar yeah. General, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No. So, um, and they're about 10 bucks I pick them up for and it doesn't matter if I break them because I just go down the, you know, if they get scratched or anything, I can easily replace them. They're not going to cost me a fortune. And they're not heavy on my head and I don't have to, like some people have pieces that sit over their glasses or they clip onto their glasses. I can't handle that because it's too much weight. Um, But yeah, I use those other magnifiers and they're great. And yeah, Yeah. at a three, three strength and yeah, I can see anything then. Yeah, I think I need to go to Walmart and get myself a pair of readers because, you know, in the last year or two, I've noticed like anything that's about closer than, you know, 20 to 30 centimeters or eight to 12 inches i'm having a lot of trouble seeing these days so it's just you know part of the joys of being in your mid 40s um your eyesight changes so yeah but the joy in it is that i used not to be able to see far away without glasses and now i can so um (laughs) yeah i'll I'll take what i can get so okay um Amy says she tried cross stitch, but as much as I liked it, I prefer EPP. So I sent all my cross stitch to a friend. Yeah, so EPP, yeah, and that, like you said, it's it's a wonderful on the go project, and it's something I've been looking forward to do because, you know, when we go hang out with friends and that sort of thing, there I can't really take my sewing machine with me, and I don't know that I really want to hand stitch stuff. Um, so that might be something I have to look into doing sometime soon. Mm. But there's lots of wonderful things that you can do by hand. Like there's sashiko stitching that you can do that's very portable. You could do, if you didn't want to get into cross stitch, if you struggled with cross stitch, you could do embroidery. There's lots of beautiful designs out there that you can do. Red work, like if you just want to work with one colour where it's a no-brainer, you don't have to think about anything. There's things like red work that you can do, which is all just back stitch. Um, It's very portable, very easy to do. keeps your hands busy and, yeah. I, I do a lot of that sort of stuff. Like I've just finished doing a, I don't know, is it out here? No, it's not out here. I can't see it. Um, I just finished doing a Sashiko Boro um, project. And so that's got layers of Japanese linen on a base fabric. And then I've Sashiko stitched it with white um, and I've hand done everything on it. A sewing machine hasn't even gone near it. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to look into that. Yeah, but I'm going to have to finish. My, I need to finish my diamond painting first. You know, I'm very much in the mindset now that I have, like, I don't mind having a million projects going at once, but I do need to finish some of them before I get too excited and start more stuff. So, I mean, I have some more projects in the works that I need that I'd like to start, but thankfully they've all been pushed back to like July, August, September. So I'm not trying to push too much. I mean, I actually did finish a quilt the other week, um, which was nice. But you know, that needs to continue. Um, it was a pinwheel quilt and it um ended up going, yeah, home of my podcast. Is that is that the one that's on the podcast? Yes, I've seen that on that was beautiful. That well done. (laughs) Oh, that was that's just it was a beautiful pattern. Um, I got the the fabric, it was 12 fat quarters um from cotton cuts. It was part of their boutiques monthly program and it came with the pattern. So I just downloaded the pattern and I put it together and then I put the um dark background on it because I didn't like the color that they suggested and it just yeah it turned out so beautifully that was such a fun project and I'm I'm glad it hasn't happy home but I do miss looking at it every so often so I guess I'll have to go back and just watch the podcast you're gonna have to make yourself one yeah if I can find that same fabric again or find something similar yeah it's a, it, it was a fun it was a fun project it really was so um, Ingrid says there's not enough time in the day to work on all the crafty things, which is why I have more whips than I can count between cr- quilting, cross stitching, and crochet. I enjoy working on all, and I totally agree. Yeah, there's never enough hours in the day. So, um, but going back Sleep to the is medic- overrated. <laughs> sorry, Sleep is overrated. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, but if you are looking for someone that, uh, if you're looking for a knitting channel, um, my wife has one. It is Dog Mom Knits. And, um, you know, she has a podcast similar to mine. She does it every other week, usually. And it's a little bit longer than mine, but yeah, she she shows off what she does with her knitting um, as well. And um, she does a wonderful job. She does primarily socks. She's been working on a, um, she's working on a sweater. 
and some other fun yep. stuff as well. And yeah, she she's a wonderful knitter. I mean, I like to toot her horn as much as I can, um, but she has won several prizes in a state fair, first prizes. Um, she got best in section last year for her shawl, which I thought was absolutely amazing. You know, I'm That's I'm I'm doing, oh, I am so proud of her. I mean, I am I am super proud of my third place um, in the doll quilt section. But for her to get first in both both things she entered and best in section, I mean, that's just absolutely amazing. And she doesn't that's wonderful. Tout, and she doesn't tout herself nearly as much as I think she should about that. You know, I tell everybody that will listen and most people that won't. Um, just because I am so proud, you know, because she's like, Oh, I'm not that, you know, I'm not that great but, and everything else, you know. What what was the name of her channel again? Dog Mom Knits. Okay, yep, cool. I was just looking for a pen. Do I have one That's right. I'll um I'll actually get you. I'll email you. I'll probably email you again and go. What was that name again? Because <laughs> I, I want to make socks. And, and if you can see over my shoulder, there's a whole heap of um sock yarn and everything in that little cubby yeah. hole. Um, I've been wanting to knit socks for so long, and I just get really confused by it. So if I can find someone that can explain how they do it a little bit like that and there's a ton of of um channels out there so you've sort of got to weed through to find the one that you're going to connect with so i definitely want to check out your wife's one yeah she does i don't know that she's done a sock tutorial and i think she, what she'll tell you is that if you like she'll teach you the basics of knitting um mm -hmm. she did a series on that last i think it was last year but if you want to learn how yep. to knit socks she directs everybody to the crazy sock lady her name is Kay. she's a wonderful lady who yep. lives in ohio um and her tutorials are absolutely fantastic so if you ever want to learn how to knit socks um the crazy sock lady is um definitely the way to go with her um to learn and then yeah if you want to watch a podcast about knitting you know amanda and Kay from the state crazy sock lady also does a wonderful podcast as well um if you want you know knitting related content that that will be next year's um <laughs> next year's problem next year's project yeah, um, Chloe says, I love Amanda. She is so fun. I plan to learn how to knit a dishcloth. And that's a wonderful way to learn how to knit is doing dishcloths. Yeah. Um, Amanda did do, does teach that. And um, the beauty about a knitted dishcloth is you can use the cheap, um, like, cotton yarn that you can buy at, mm -hmm. like, Spotlight or wherever for, like, a couple of bucks. And they are the best dishcloths. Like, they get the stuff off plates and dishes and that sort of thing so well. So, I mean, it's a wonderful... Um, way to learn maria johns is just saying the crafty gemini has sock knitting videos now i follow crafty gemini why did i not know that i must have missed I that I've the crafty gemini too. yeah well i used to many many years ago i'm actually on the 24th of this month i'm meeting up with a lady named liz sawyer and she's from the uk and she's over here visiting family and okay. um, we're meeting up because we originally met each other in a Crafty Gemini, uh, Crafty Gemini's first um, cook club that she had back in, I want to say 2013, 14, around that time, um, maybe a bit later. And um, that's how I uh, met this uh, lady. And we've been, we became fast friends online and we've, she's been supporting me throughout my YouTube journey and, and whatnot. And um, yes, yeah, she's, she's finally in Australia, so I'm going to go and meet up with her next weekend and have a cuppa and yeah, have a bit of a chit chat before That's she heads it. back to the UK. Yeah, I I don't know that I've met any of the other content creators here yet. I mean, I keep need, meaning to go see Becca because she only lives like three and a half hours up the road. But every time we're in the DC area, you know, we're up and back, and we just haven't had time yet. But um, yeah, next year we'll probably. I'll probably meet up with a bunch of them because there's a huge quilt show that you might have heard of called QuiltCon that yep. goes from different city each year and it's going to be in Raleigh, North Carolina next year. And that's only like two and a half hours down the road for me. So I'm going to be able to like drive down that morning, spend the day, say hi to everybody and then, you know, hop in the car and come home. Um, let's see. Someone I, was was supposed to, I was supposed to come over for the one that was at Atlanta in 2020. I think it, it was, was in 2021. Well, it was in Atlanta this year as well. So it might have been oh, there in 2020. It? I don't know. Well, it was, I think I, I didn't end up coming because it must have been 2021 because I didn't end up coming because everything was grounded. Oh, okay. Because of 
COVID um, and everything else. The, the pandemic and whatnot. So I couldn't go, like we couldn't get flights and they'll cancel on flights left, right and centre. So, um, yeah, so basically I had planned to um, come over and meet up with a group of people that I've known online for quite some time through the Crafty Gemini Quilt Club is how I met them all. And we were all going to go to QuiltCon together, but Obviously, uh, World Events had other ideas. Um, so, yeah, so we, I didn't end up going. So we've put it off because airfares are just so not cheap right now. And, um, yeah, so I'm just going to have to wait a couple of years. And when I come over, my husband will probably come over with me because he's got a YouTube channel as well called King of Toe Crew. Okay. And that's all car content. Um, and so he wants to come over and and um there's a car he wants. I couldn't tell you what it is because it changes every week, I'm sure. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, he wants to go over and purchase a car and, and ship it back here. So we're going to go over together. He's going to go and do his thing and I'm going to go and do my thing. <laughs> yeah, um, um, yeah. Yeah, we can talk about this later, but if you need to ship the car back, there's um, what they call row row carriers where they, it's kind of like a big parking. They just basically drive the car onto the ship and they get it back to Australia. Um, mm. That's kind of my line of work. We don't have service to Australia, unfortunately. Otherwise, I'd say, hey, this is our booking department. But that's it's a lot cheaper mm. than putting it inside a container. And I think it's mm. a lot safer too. Um, mm. Okay, so Rebecca was asking what I was working on. I'm working on a T-shirt quilt. And I'm just putting the sashing on right now. So this is what I've done so far. I just put the bottom sashing on this row. And I haven't pressed it yet. So I'm just slowly working on it this because I need to get this done and it's something easy I can do while I'm chatting because I'm very very distracted um today but that's okay um Janet was asking you might be able to um explain this better than me because I have no clue um what is Shas Eco and Red Work and I'm probably and that's what I was just ducking off camera to grab <laughs> oh, okay all right so yeah just um hold up. yeah just bear with us a second and she'll explain it because i know it's something japanese um inspired but other than that i have not no idea i will be back in two seconds i've just got to go and grab it okay no problem yeah so balance says ship a car yikes it's actually fairly easy it's well, yeah basically you take the car to the port no you have to make a booking first of course and then yeah it's basically they have these ships and this is how most new cars come over from like japan or europe and everything else it's like a big car, like multi-level car park inside the ship and they just drive it on, they strap it down and then it floats across the ocean and then they take it off and um, that's that. So, yeah, it's not as difficult or as expensive as you might think it is. I mean, all right, so Nicole should have our... All right, I'm you? back. <laughs> it's called... Um, it's Depending where you are in the world, it's either uh, Shisiko... Sh Sashiko or Shisiko, some people say it. Um, okay. And basically what it is, it's very basic craft to do. Um, I can show you how some of the um, panels come. So this is, I just did this on Slow Stitching Saturday. It was a new start. Basically, it's running stitch. Um, you get these, you can get these pre-printed um, panels. This one's got the four seasons on it. Um, so it's got little motifs all over it. And you can see at the top there, I've just started to do some running stitch. And it's very easy. It's a no-brainer. You just follow along, follow all those lines, and you put your thread on it. And I'm using navy blue on this particular one. Um, and then you've got geometrical ones that look like this. So we've got little uh, dragonflies and whatnot, a little fan in the corner, and then you just do that. It's a Japanese um, inspired craft and um, it came, originally came out of necessity. This is modern day sashiko, um, but what it originally was, was when they had uh, to do a repair or anything in their clothing because they don't want to waste. And it's very much a rural craft. So it's from like the rural areas of Japan and, and whatnot. And so they would do layering like this one. So this is um, a sashiko piece that, I've, that I was talking about earlier that I've done all by hand. No, no sewing machine's been near this. I've hand sewn uh, the borders together and everything. And you can see that there's layers of fabric on a base fabric. So the base fabric would be, if it was a piece of clothing, 
um, they would put a patch on it and then they would do a series of these stitches, which is just running stitch. And in some cases they do little crosses and then there are different patterns that they put on there that have um, auspicious meanings and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, and it was born out of necessity. So it was to prolong their, their clothing and those jackets used to get, and pants and clothing used to get handed down through the generations um, because they don't believe in wasting anything. So, you know, there could be layers upon layers upon layers of repairs on all of them. Um, and that's basically Sashiko in a nutshell. Now, I don't claim to be an expert or anything like that. There are some, there are many wonderful channels out there um, by people that do a lot of it. I just dabble in it every now and again and share my experience with people. The other one that uh, Janet asked about was red work. So red work basically is backstitch or sometimes some French knots, maybe a little bit of satin stitch. Um, you generally have a pattern and you follow the lines again after you've drawn it out. It's just embroidery. Um, as I said, it's just backstitch and it's just done in um, a red thread. But you can also do it in black. Um, you can do it in blue, but predominantly red work is the most popular. And, um, yeah, so this pattern was in our last issue of Down the Rabbit Hole magazine uh, in the winter issue. And uh, we did a story on red work in there and um, we had some sample pieces in there. So, yeah, and that's pretty much red work and Sashiko in a nutshell. Very nice. Well, see, I've learned something new today because I had no clue. So, um, but it's it's funny that you talk about um, the winter edition because it's getting cold down there for you guys because you're going in the winter. And it reminds me of a story the first time I took my wife down to Australia in 2006 and we're walking through Darling Harbour, which is a like a nice area in downtown Sydney. And, you know, we're walking across the, this nice bridge and all of a sudden she stops and takes a picture of this sign, like an advertising sign. I'm like, what is she doing? And um, she took a picture of it. And I'm like, why did you take a picture of this for, you know, of this? I, I just want to understand. And it was um, some sort of um, concert series. And it said winter concert series. And I had the dates in June, July and August. And I was like, oh, okay, I get it. <laughs> Because here in North America, it's the middle of summer. So, um, yeah, she was just fascinated by it being called um, the Winter Concert Series. So, uh, <laughs> Nicole was telling me earlier, it was um, it's fairly cool there right now. I think you said it was like eight or nine degrees Celsius, correct? Which is yeah, about... Yeah, and getting, and getting colder. Getting um, colder. Yeah, it's... it's um, yeah, the temperature will, temperature will start dropping pretty quickly. So that's yeah, it's, about it's now eight degrees. <laughs> yeah, it's so going about, down. Yeah, so it's about forty-five degrees Fahrenheit, and it's supposed to get down to about what one or two degrees Celsius, which is about thirty-four. Um, mm. So you know, for the folks up there in Queensland, that is cold. I know some of the people up in Canada and northern parts of US would be like, okay, yeah, thirty-four is like we're still in t-shirt and shorts. Um, but you know, it's all relative. It's cold. So. It is cold for us. Like I, in Queensland, in summer, I get up to um, anywhere from thirty-five to forty-one degrees. Um, so you know, to be, and that's like a lot of the year. That's what it yeah. is during the day. Like at night, it gets cold, but during the day, we get up to about twenty. Well, the other day, we only got up to eighteen. But most winter days, we're at. at 19 to 24 will swing between that maybe 25 which is nice it's not too bad you can yeah. walk out in shorts and you don't have you know eye skills hanging off your eyelashes yeah and that's nice i mean just um to translate back to fahrenheit um 18 to you know roughly about 67 24 is about 76 77 um yeah i could be off by the degree or two i'm just going off memory um so yeah that, those are beautiful winter days i mean i know here in virginia a winter day can any be anywhere between yeah, you know, it can be as cold as, you know, 25 degrees Fahrenheit up to maybe 55, which is about minus three to, you know, what you're currently experiencing now, um, maybe yeah. 10 or 11. So, yeah. yeah, well, we're not in the dead of winter yet. We're only at the beginning. Um, some yeah. uh, a couple of years ago, we got down to minus six. That was mm. that was pretty cold. <laughs> Yeah, I walked oh, yeah. outside and went, "Have I moved to Victoria? Like, did someone sh like come in the middle of the night and move me? What's going on? I'm in Queensland." <laughs> yeah, well, that's how we felt the other week. Like, um, we went to a baseball game here, and it was, 
60 degrees or 15 degrees Celsius. And, but the winds were wicked. Like it was like um, 45 kilometer per hour winds. And uh, I was sitting there shivering at the baseball stadium. We ended up leaving early because um, it was just so cold. Like I was like, this is June. It's not supposed to be cold here in the US in June. It's supposed to be, I was like, did we move to Australia? Like, I had the same mindset as you. Like, <laughs> What's uh, going on? Okay. Sorry? No, that you'd be sitting there going, what's going on? Why, why am I so cold? Why am I shivering? <laughs> yeah, the weatherman lied to us as well because they said it was supposed to be like 75, you know, or 24 degrees Celsius and sunny. And so, you know, I went in t-shirt and shorts. If I had known it was supposed to be freezing cold, I would have, you know, put a jacket on or something. Um, there was more the wind than anything else. Like when it wasn't, wind, like when the wind died down, it wasn't bad, but yet the wind just made it miserable. So... All right. Good morning, um, Stephanie from Memoirs of a Long Arm Quilter. It's good to see you. Um, yeah, Pam says I'm with you on that, Nicole. It's ridiculously cold here in Queensland at the moment. Yeah, and I've heard a lot of people say it's it's been pretty cold there in Queensland so far. Because yeah, you guys just aren't used to that. Like we've gone, um, we've gone swimming um, like in Queensland in the middle of winter. Like with you know the water park near next to Dream World. You know, we went there in the middle of August. And went swimming and it wasn't the warmest day i've ever gone swimming but it, it was comfortable you know because it was like yeah so the heat you guys get as cold as you are it's it's quite unusual it's kind of like um you guys are fairly you know geographically lies same sort of latitude or longer to whichever one it is to like southern florida i would imagine i think it is if i remember correctly so um the Gold Coast and Brisbane, yeah, I would say that, that they're like on par with, like from what I've seen, I've never been to Florida or anything, but from what I've seen and my understanding, it's a, it's the same sort of climate. Where yeah. I am, I'm I'm um, two hours, three hours from the coast. So I'm inland. So that's why I get cold. So in Central Australia at this time of year, as you would know, it can get down below zero. Mm -hmm. So as you start getting away from the coast, the colder you get. It's like anywhere. Yeah. Um, so for me, like while some people might be on the coast and they'll be experiencing cold weather, 15 or 10 degrees or whatever um, at night, for me it gets even lower again. So I'm And I'm uh, quite elevated as well. I'm up on the same as the Great Dividing Range. Um, so the same, I'm on the same uh, sea level as um, Southern Highlands. Right. So you're like, you're like yeah. what, 800,000 metres up? Is that what you Yeah, been? something like that, yeah. About, about 800 metres, I think 900 metres up. Okay. So, so we're, that's we're like a fair 20, way up. Yeah, that's somewhere between 25 and 3,000 feet of elevation for anyone that um, is not um, familiar with metric, which is most of us, I think. Um Thankfully, I know both systems. I mean, I grew up with metric of you guys. And then when I come over here, I have to learn the US system. But, you know, it kind of comes in handy at work. It's like my um, sidekick at work, she'll she'll yell over the wall, hey, Sean, what's three meters and feet? <laughs> or whatever. Because like, everything in our work systems is metric, which works beautifully um, for me. All right. Okay. So now Shannon says it's been cool where she is. And she's about five hours north of me. And apparently she's probably got a jinx of soul. So. If it starts getting really warm here in the eastern part of the US, it's um, all Shannon's fault. <laughs> um, uh, Pam is also asking where I'm actually located. I am, and I believe Pam's in Brisbane area. I am actually a couple of hours away from Brisbane um, and I'm in a place called Kingaroy. Yeah, but it's kind of like that here too, like on the east coast of the US, like we're near the coast and we don't get, you know, as cold as it does up in the mountains, which is, you know, mm. a couple of hours west of us yeah. um, at the higher elevation. So I definitely know that. Okay, so yeah, if it does snow next week in Maryland, it's all um, Shannon's fault. And, but I think the chances of that happening is fairly remote. So I think, I think you'll be all right there, Shannon, don't worry. Um, all right. Let's see, Jan says it's cold in Western Australia as well. Yeah, it's just, I don't know, it's always weird to hear after living here as many years as I have to hear it's cold um, in the middle of June. So. And then at Christmas, it's always fun to see like a Facebook stuff at Christmas time because, you know, it's usually cool here. Um, and seeing everybody in like there at the beach and in their 
you know, shorts and shirts, and we're sitting here halfway freezing to death. <laughs> yeah, there was one Christmas that was unusually warm. It was like um, 72 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 degrees Celsius, and um, it was wonderful. I loved it, every minute of it, because it was so, it was as close to home as I'd ever get. <laughs> Pam's just putting in, in, I was just telling um, Sean before we come on live that um, I live in peanut country and uh, oh, yes. Pam's just put into the comments there. She goes, um, haha, peanut country equals King Roy. <laughs> yeah, that, that was fun that you were talking about that because um, like the next city over from where I live is um, Suffolk, Virginia. And that is like the big peanut producer here in the US. Um, it's hmm. where I think planters, peanuts, you know, kind of got founded and they have like a peanut festival every fall and that sort of thing there. So it's interesting that, you know, you live close to a peanut producing place and so do I. So very, very, very small world. Um, <laughs> yeah, Fallon seems very interested in the sh chassis. Sash yeah, code. thank you. Um, yeah. yeah, my pronunciation of foreign languages is horrible. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna, <laughs> yeah, I'm not even going to try anymore. So, yeah, it seems like she's um seeing who's interested. They may do, she might do some sort of solo along with that sort of thing there. So, yeah, that would be a lot of fun to do with Fallon because everything she does is a lot of fun. I think she, you got, are you having your um live at 10 this morning, Fallon? She usually is alive right after mine. So if you want more good quilty, um oh, you and Pam were fairly close together, it seems like. Yeah, I just seen that. We're only she said that she was from Kalangala, and uh yeah, we're about 45 minutes away from each other. Oh wow, okay. That's fun. Yeah, and I think the plan is to have her on the channel next week. So yeah, we're having two Aussies in a row. I think that'd be a lot of fun. So all right, Janet says she's interested as well, Fallon. I'm looking for something to do on the plane when she goes. Oh, yeah, she's going over to the UK in August, so that'll be fun for us. So, yeah, um, if you're interested in that, yeah, definitely let Fallon know because I think there's enough interest. She might do a, a solo on I would. I'm not going to commit to it because I just have more than that. I just don't have enough hours of my day right now. But, um, okay, she says yes. Yeah, good, like, um there's actually a really good resource book. It's um, it's called the Ultimate Sashiko um, Source Book, and it gives you a really good description of what it's about and all that sort of stuff as well. And it's by Susan Briscoe, um, okay. and it's got lots of different um, diagrams and history about it and different things that you can do and all that sort of stuff. So if that's something that you're looking for, um, yeah, the ultimate Sashiko source book. It's got patterns, projects, and inspiration by Susan Briscoe. Um, it's one of my favorite books of hers. Su Susan Briscoe has a lot of awesome books out there for all different sorts of things. That's that's wonderful. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely check that out if it's something you're interested in. So um, let's see 100 you can't say you're glistening anymore at all on sweating temperatures absolutely foreign language plus the country accent doesn't work well for me yeah i'm like that with spanish um with my australian accent i absolutely butchered a spanish language um i've tried speaking it in central america when i was down there about 20 years ago and nobody could understand a word i was saying um and that was kind of sad because i was working um well, I was down there for a mission trip and we're working at a in a clinic and someone's you know someone told me well go ahead and get these people to fill out the form so we can get them you know seen and i told them you know fill out the form in spanish whatever that is and they're all looking at me and going what's this dude saying and then so i wrote down the word so then i was like okay well i'll write down the words in spanish and you know and they can just read it and they told us beforehand that you know like over half the people in that country can't read i'm like yeah whatever yeah, and I, I had to show this piece of paper to like eight people before I found some old dude that could read. And then once he read it, he told everybody else. I was like, oh, Jesus. So then I was like, okay, I, I'm done. Like, go put, I'll, I'll go dig ditches or um, weed whack of a machete or whatever else you want me to do. But yeah, don't put me with, you know, don't make me be the one having to speak to people because they do not understand a word I'm saying. 
<laughs> well, thank you for yeah, I'm not, I'm not real good at it either. Yeah. And then I had a um, classmate of mine from high school said he went to like Peru or something like that and they couldn't understand him either. So I was like, okay, yeah, it must be the accent that throws them off because you've got to roll your R's or I forget what it is in Spanish. Um, but whatever I was doing, it wasn't, it wasn't right. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. I do okay with German. Um, the Germans can understand me. Um, I, do oh. okay with, I do okay with French, or like, at least they can understand when I talk to them in English. Um, but yeah, the Spanish, not so much. I don't speak any um, other language, even though um, part of my heritage is Spanish, Portuguese, and Egyptian. <laughs> and I don't speak anything. Because when my family, um, I'm first generation born Australian. Okay. And um, so on my dad's side. And when they came here, they decided, like, they still spoke um well, my grandfather spoke nine different languages, but they predominantly spoke Italian at home because apparently it's an easier language for children to learn. And oh, okay. um, yeah. And so basically there was a lot of Italian spoken and all that sort of stuff, but they decided that they didn't want, um, they wanted to embrace uh, the English speaking and, and all that sort of stuff. So they didn't do a lot of um, speaking Italian, except for when they were alone. But when all family come over, they always spoke English and everything. And on my mum's side, the Spanish Portuguese, um, that language was pretty much lost with my great grandmother. Right. So, yeah, because do they even teach Spanish in Australian schools now? Because I know when I was there, they didn't. Um, I think they they mostly well, my girls have learned Indonesian and Japanese. Okay. Yeah, because when I went through high school, and it was a long time ago, um, they taught us German, French, Italian, and then I think Japanese was rolling out right after I went through seventh and eighth grade, where we were. Yeah. Well, when I was at school, they only had French and German. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I know a little so Italian. I, I, yeah, I I finished school in the eighties, so. Oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah, a little and then I think it was probably. Early, early nineties, I think, because um, my brother and sister they're five and seven years younger than me. So when they were in high school, yeah. um, I think my sister might have been in year nine, year eight, year nine. They started rolling out Japanese. Oh, so we're probably the same age then, yeah. Because I think it was year nine or year ten, which were in ninety three and ninety four. Um, mm when they roll that Japanese and yeah, I'd already picked my electives and I wasn't starting something new. So um, yeah, well my sister, my sister is um five years younger than me. So she's she's 48 now. So oh, yeah. Okay. So she yeah, she would have been in year nine in 93, 90, 92, 93, something like that. Maybe, maybe no. I mean, on, she, no, because I had my son at 22, so she was in yeah, it must have been year 10 that they rolled it out because she didn't do it in her senior schooling. So that must have been the early ni early 90 that they rolled yeah. that out. Yeah, she's a couple of years older than me. Yeah. So. All right. Someone was asking me a minute ago about the how it got the T-shirt so flat. Uh, T-shirt fabric is so flat and smooth. I assume you have a stabilizer. Do you also start T-shirt fabric? No. Um, I just use the... I always call it the wrong thing, the fusible interfacing. It's, um, I actually have some of it right here. Yeah, fusible interfacing, that's what it's called. Um, I just used the Pellon P44F by um, Pellon. Is it woven or non-woven? I don't know, what's it say? Um, hell, I, can't, I can't read this. I need my glasses. I don't think it's woven. So know, woven will feel like feel like a cotton, and non-woven will feel like a paper. Yeah, it's more paper. Um, I don't know. Mm. Let me see. Yeah, it's more paper. It's just not doesn't feel like cotton. This is actually yeah. some of it right here. 
Yeah, no, that's a non-woven. Yeah. yeah. But I use it because it's um, it's lightweight. It's 99 cents a yard. If you don't buy it on sale, I wait till it's half price and then I buy a bolt of it at a time. Mm -hmm. And um, it just, yeah, it works really, really well. I mean, you can see just how nice it looks on the back. And again, yep. with the steam press, it, it's far more even. So, but yeah, I, I don't starch anything. I've never used starch for some reason. Uh, my mother loved starching everything. So, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use starch on um, a t shirt quilt, but on like piecing and stuff like that when I'm working with triangles and everything, pre starching your fabrics before you cut them is key for really good okay. um, piecing. Um, it does, like some people say, you know, oh, I don't do it or anything like that, but it does actually make a difference. I never used to do it either. And then I started doing, like when I first started patchworking, um, and then I started doing it and I'm like, why wasn't I doing this before? <laughs> because I just had better, better success with um, piecing and getting things to go together, especially when you're working with triangles and stuff, like, and little pieces, I, I find it, um, but it's a personal preference at the end of the day. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I've never started, I, I'm, maybe I should try it someday and just see what happens. But I've always found, like, I found recently the um, game changer for me was one of these beauties. Yeah, I've been using the clapper for years for my patchworking because I use it for um, making wallets and stuff like that. So, mm, okay, yeah, that to me was a huge game changer. Was getting my um, getting my clapper earlier this year. I don't know why I waited so long, but and another game changer for me, and and I go I bang on about this all the time on my channel <laughs> is fork pins clover fork pins so they've got the two prongs they look like a little horseshoe but really long yep. they <laughs> make such a difference for piecing especially with four patches and where you've got a lot of points going into one another they work so well i need to get some of those i've seen more and more people i only discovered them recently like on different people's channels but they they do seem to work so well so yeah that's something i'll have to um treat myself to the next time i go to the store uh, good morning, Laura. It is good to see you. I did get your email. Um, I just, I am terrible at replying to stuff sometimes. Um, so, but yeah, I did see it. And she's just, um, she's a fairly new quilter. She's doing a lot of hand quilting and just the work that she's been doing at that is just absolutely stunning. And she's going to be um, joining um, me on the channel here in a few weeks, I think it is. I think it's like the 8th of July or if I remember correctly. I'm terrible at dates. Thankfully, all my stuff's on my calendar, so I can actually remember who's who's coming on next. Um, Janet says the same thing. She says fork pins were such a game changer to me as well. Um, how do you use them? I mean, I think you just use them like regular pins, but you got two, they're two prongs. So like if you put them in like a, at an intersection, um, you can put like one pin on either side, correct? Yeah, yep. okay. It's like having two pins. They're connected with a like a U shape. And basically, when you're doing a four patch or you've got uh, uh, seams coming in together and you're nesting them, essentially, you put them in a quarter inch down from your raw edge and you're going on either side of the seam. And that means that it's locked into place. It's not going to move or anything like that. So, um, like, you can still get the same precision with a straight pin. It just takes the mess out of it sometimes you know when you move it remove a straight pin when you're sewing it sometimes can shift your seam you don't yeah. get that yeah i think i have to try to that because usually what i do is i use um i use my little clips um i put one on either side but having the one pin with the two prongs um i think mm. would like you said it'd be easier and it might even be more more precise so uh, yeah Next time I go visit my well, friend. That, that, is, that has been my experience. Like I, anybody that is in the comments right now that's been on my channel, um, that will all agree that I bang on about them all the time. Every time I use them. If you haven't got these, these yet, these are a game changer. You need to get them. The link is down below. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to go grab some soon because it's, it's been on my radar for a while, but I'm, I am terrible about going to buy things. Um, you know, well, I, I'm the same, Sean. I don't, I don't have all the bells and whistles. I have my general supplies that I need for patchworking, 
but I don't have all the bells and whistles that come out, you know, all the time. So basically, and I think my audience also knows that if I say something is good, it's because I'm using it. Um, yep. And I've used it a lot before I've said anything. Like I haven't even used the diagonal tape until just recently. One of my, one of my subscribers who is now a friend um, actually bought me some and said, you need to try this. So you can just, when you're doing like sewing corner to corner, You've just mm. got the tape on your machine and you just line up your corners. You don't have to mark it or anything like that. Right. Um, yeah. And so I tend not to recommend things or anything because I don't do all the bells and whistles. I have my rotary cutter. I have my pinking shears um, and I have my rulers and that's about it. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm the same way. Like, you know, I'm I'm not getting paid by any company to promote product. Well, I'm an ambassador for Cotton Cuts, you know, and I help promote their puzzle mystery quilts. But other than that, um, I really am a free agent, so to speak. So, yeah, I mean, if I'm telling you I like something, it's because I truly believe it. Like, I don't want to sit there and I don't want to be, a, I really don't want to try and sell too much, you know, because it's not, I'm, I'm here to share my love of quilting. And yeah, if I find a yeah. product, like you said, that, that I really enjoy, yes, I'm going to tell everybody about it. Yeah, because if it makes yeah. my life easier, it may make your life easier. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to sit there and promote. And the stuff. four pins will make your life easier. I know, and as I said, it's um, it's yeah, it's something that's been on my radar. I just haven't got around to hitting the purchase button. I, I mean, yeah, I could go on the Amazon right now while we're sitting here talking and order them. But I do like to support you know small businesses and yeah. that sort of thing wherever I can. So um, that's probably saved me a lot of money because then I end up not buying it for a long time as well. Um, good morning, Janice, from the right way. It's good to see you as well. Um, Rebecca T is asking, what is the purpose of pinking shears? It's to help stop fraying of the fabric, correct? Yes. So hang on, I'll just grab a set. I've got a set just there. Okay, perfect. I think that was one of the few things I remember from um, home economic class in the early 90s. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I didn't yeah. learn much, but that was one of the things I did learn. Okay, so pinking shears, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it or not, um, have a jagged edge. So if you're familiar with pre-cut fabrics, mm -hmm. um, they all have pinked edges. So they it's the valleys and the peaks on it, and you've got specialised scissors for that. I use these a lot on my channel for taking out bulk in, um, in seams and stuff like that when you turn things through. So when you're making containers and handbags and all that sort of stuff, you want to take a lot of the bulk out of the seams before you start top stitching it or anything like that. And so you use these, it stops it from fraying. It's also great for curves as well, because you know how when you do a curve, you've got a notch all the way around, you can use your pinking shears and it saves you having to do those little um, V's all the way around. You just go around the edge and it'll be fine. You can... Um, yeah, and then you'll be able to turn things in and you'll get a really nice um, edge on and a curve when you've um, pressed it all out and you're top stitching. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. I, I am listening, I promise. Yeah, no, uh, no, you're right. I just got to update this list because apparently it flags something that really shouldn't have been flagged. Um, yeah, Brenda said I got the two prong prings. Suppose it was trying to prick fabric, and I reckon that was not how you use them. I gave them away, um, and it picked up on one of the words there, which you know can be used as a naughty word, uh, but that was not oh, her okay, intention. Yeah. So yeah, um, and I've explained this a couple of times in the past on the channel when I started this. Um, I put I found a fairly extensive list of words that should be blacklisted, and I figured I'd have to make adjustments because it may not apply to us, and that's that's one of them. So, um, yeah, don't don't worry about that, Brenda. It's you, I know you didn't um, mean anything bad. It was not intended that way, and I've updated the list, so that shouldn't be a problem as, in the future in, as well. So, um, so so be it. Quilt says she hates pinked edges in quilting, but loves them in bag making. Same. Hmm. I don't use that. I don't. I don't like them in the pre-cuts, but I understand it's a necessary evil that they've got to do um, because otherwise you just end up with all frayed um, 
fabric and whatnot, but in bag making, they are an essential tool. And in fact, any sewing other than quilt making, they are an essential tool. So even in your clothing, if you make clothes and stuff like that, they're great to um, clean up edges, especially with linen and stuff like that, because linen, as soon as you touch it, it just starts to fray um, and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, so I totally agree. Yep. And see, I'm learning stuff all the time because I know um, Fallon from So Be It Quilts does a lot of, well, she does a decent amount of bag making in that. She does a wonderful job of that. I've never really done that. I mean, I've used pre-cuts once or twice um, and seen the, the pinked edges and I've wondered why. So, yeah, I'm, I'm learning um, all sorts of fun and interesting stuff today. Uh, all right. Did I miss anything else in the... Um, um, in the chat, probably. Um, we talked about the, the two. The <laughs> Slay Arts says um, the first rule of gadget addiction is we don't talk about gadget addiction. <laughs> yes. Love well, isn't it. That the first step to isn't acceptance the first um, step to recovery or is that something else? <laughs> I'm the opposite. I'm good at buying. Okay. Laura says I'm the opposite. I'm good at buying things in my. LOL, my bank balance, not always so happy with it. Yeah, and that, that's always an issue too. So, <laughs> yeah. Pam says, seems to use them, pinking shears stop or reduce dramatically fraying. Yep, so that's basically what we were talking about. So, hey, see, I, I, do, I do know some stuff, which is good. Um, okay, yep, we said that. Uh, someone told me that I did a really good job at multitasking, and thank you for that. I, that means the world to me. Um, it's definitely come with practice. When I first do, started doing these lives, um, it was not as easy. It's yeah, I feel far more comfortable with this than I did, you know, six months ago, twelve months ago as well. But thank, thank you for that. That that means a lot. Um, so there we go. Good morning to Susan Yearout. It is good to see you with us this morning. This is my guest Nicole Reed from the Barnaby Design, and she sounds a little bit like me because she's also another Aussie who decided that. Um, who was very gracious and decided to hop on with us, um, even though it's almost midnight there. Yeah, if, you, if you're watching the clock above my head, that's PM, not AM. So yes. it's what? It's quarter past 11. It's backwards yes. to me, so I can't read the clock backwards. Yeah, so she um, she took a nap earlier, so that way she'd stay awake, because I was like, yeah, I, don't, I, I did one live, I think, at like 8 p.m. one night, and that was almost enough. Although I think I did a live with Donna once for New Year's Eve, and um, how I managed to—I think I took an—I think I was like you. I think I did take a nap that that um that that afternoon to make sure I wasn't you know too too far asleep. So that that was a, I think that was a very wise move. Uh, well, I, just, I was laughing with with a few uh, people on the live stream the other day. Uh, on Friday, I had because um, I've also got a book channel as well called um, Dusty Book Sniffers, and that's okay. where I because I I'm also addicted to reading, and um, like yeah, so and that's where I talk about all the books that I read and whatnot, and um, I have a live stream that goes for eight hours on a Friday. Oh wow! And it's and, yeah, and it's I don't, I'm not talking for the whole eight hours, so it's called Reading and Productivity Sprints. And basically we talk for about 15, 20 minutes and then we go silent and hyper-focus on our reading or our productivity, what we want to get done. And um, we were, I was talking the other day that I was coming on um, here because there's a lot of people that are crafty in that and I thought they might be interested. So I mentioned it and I said, and I was talking about my to-do list and I said, and on Saturday, my to-do list is nothing else but 10 p.m. live stream and nap at 4 p.m. <laughs> 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 That's funny. What do they what do they say to that? A lot of people thought it was weird, but anyway, <laughs> they, yep. they they thought it was funny. Um, but yeah, like I just I knew that I had to switch my day around, which is okay because when I first originally started working, I was a shift worker, so I can sleep during the day, and my room's really dark because um, yep. it has no windows in it, and because the only window that I have actually comes out into my, it's a door that comes out into my um, sewing room. So. Nice. Um, okay. So we have a question here from Rebecca, which I, and she's asking everybody in the audience. And I think I'd like to hear your answer to this too, is what is your favorite gadget? My favorite gadget. Oh, 
That's a hard one because I do so many different crafts. But I would have to say my two favourite gadgets are my pinking shears and my clapper. Hmm, okay. I've always joked that... I always joke that this is my favourite. My friend Jack, who has not come out today, it's... I think it's been two weeks in a row. This is almost like a world record. We have to keep track of how many times Jack comes out. Um, yeah, and non, you, you need a little sign up behind you. No incidents. You know how they have in workplaces. Yeah. No incidents for however many days. You need to yes. make a quilting, a little quilt one, with applique on it, and have little little Velcro dots that you can put the numbers on the, how many days you haven't pulled out the out deck. I might have to do that. That's that's a wonderful idea. I love that. Um, I don't know. I have so many favorite gadgets. Like I'm kind of like you. I don't buy all the bells and whistles, but there are some stuff that um, I can't really see myself living without. I mean, obviously the sewing machine's one. Um, yeah. My clapper would be another one because I think um, someone else said the clapper. And then can I reach it? Yes. Okay. This thing's been a game changer for me as well. What the heck is that? This is a oh, that's a ruler stuff. with a handle on it. Okay. Yeah, it's a, what they call a quilter slide lock. It's actually made by Fallon from So Be It Quilts. And okay. if you look at the bottom of it, it has like these 13 little um, rubber things. And so when you push mm-hmm. down, it grips the fabric. Mm-hmm. And so it does not move. The fabric does not move. It's, it's an absolute game changer for um, when you like cutting yardage and that sort of thing there as well. So, so like, yeah. is it for the width? Of the width? Of the fabric and there's no markings on it so you have to use your cutting mat with it yeah well what they suggest is um putting a ruler up against it i've been, i've kind of been naughty and just using the markings on the um mm. cutting mat and it's been working okay for me but if it was something really precise i think you know you're best off putting the rule up against it they're still trying to mm. figure out how to get markings on these this is like one of the early ones and this is a 24 and a half inch one i think they're releasing the 14 inch one today so yeah this is i i love this thing so, so um, who, who does that is that so be it quilts is that fallon yes Did you say? Yeah, her yeah. And her husband, yeah her and her husband make it um they have the pattern for it and yeah that's just the shipping to australia is um not fun apparently um no but, i wouldn't imagine it is it's a it's some, a very um expensive exercise yeah I think what I might have to do is next time I go to Australia, um, I might have to you know, put like 10 or 12 of them in there and ship them to everybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, have you purchase it and have it shipped to me and I'll put it in the suitcase and then mail it to yes, you and yeah. PM and everyone else when I go down there next. So, um, so how, how often do you come back to the homeland? About every five years or so. I mean, I would have liked to have gone back this summer. But like you said earlier, the airfares were just absolutely insane because I think, you know, everybody stayed put for two and a half years. And so now that, you know, we can all travel freely again, um, the airline tickets are reflecting the increase in demand. So, um, yeah, about every, about every five years or so. I mean, the last time I was down there was in 2018, no, 2017. Um, hopefully next year we'll, we'll go back. Yeah. So, but we'll... We'll see as well. Good morning, Deborah. She says, nice to see you both at once. A fan of you both. Well, thank you very much. When am I coming? Um, hopefully, hopefully next year, Janet. So yeah, we may, we may, if all, all kidding aside, what we usually do is we usually get out of one bag each. Um, because we always bring more stuff back and come back with two. Um, so yeah, I mean, all, all kidding aside, I might be able to throw a couple of those in the bag if it's something you guys are interested in. You know, you'd have to pay for it and ship it to me, and then I could bring it down and do it that way so um i can't do it for every australian but you know for my favorites um the ones i you know talk to all the time like jan yourself ham and that sort of thing there we might be able to work something else and you know who knows maybe alan and that will be able to get us an australian supplier between now and then as well so um yeah yeah but yeah we'll talk about that um as time goes on but yeah but I think we'll go ahead and wrap things up in a couple of minutes because I used to try and end at about 9.30 Eastern time or 11.30 Nicole time. And um, Fallon's going to have her live in about 35 minutes. So if you want another live to hang out at in a little bit, you know, go grab some coffee, your breakfast or your late night snack if you're over with Nicole. Um, and hang yeah, midnight out with- snack. 
Yeah, midnight snack. Yep. And um, then uh, mum and pop shop will be on later on. I think they're usually about 1 or 2 p.m. in the afternoon, Eastern time. And um, oh, there we go, a slide block mule. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I, I enjoy that. Um, so there you go. Uh, let's see. Did we catch everything? Okay. Um, someday when you have time, I'd like to hear how you ended up in the USA. Quick story about that. Uh, yeah, I met my wife. Um, 20 some years ago and you know we decided to get married and one of us needed to move and my background in customer service made it a lot easier for me to come here um, she was a u.s history major and um, there's not a whole lot of call for that in australia so um, we figured that was just the easiest way to go so that's that's the um reader's digest version of it and yeah i've been here 21 and a half years thankfully still have my accent and, um, you know, I think it's toned down a little bit. I know every time I go home, um, my family tells me, or well, my friends always tell me I sound like a Yankee. And I'm like, you have no idea. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> okay, thank you. It's, it's good, to, um, good to know that it's just there, there, there's, a, there's a slight twang in there, but. Oh, of course. Not, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. That's, that's a given. That's the same as anybody that goes to the UK from Australia. They get that, that different. Yeah. Um, speech pattern but that's just because you assimilate to where you are but i don't yeah. i don't hear an american accent no i mean i've been you know people ask you know when you uk all the time interestingly enough some people think i come from boston i'm like i sound nothing like a bostonian like <laughs> oh. <laughs> a lot of people struggle with especially like if i get a start to um just start to waffle on a bit. I start using a lot of the Aussie slang, like on the eight hour live streams. Yes. The other day I was talking about something that was exp expensive and I've gone, oh yeah, it's a bit exy. And then I'm like, oh, that means expensive because I caught myself, I heard myself, or I'll say Maccas or something like that will be. Yeah. And I start abbreviating everything. And then people are just like, what is she saying? <laughs> and right. then there's a whole conversation about all the different um different things that you shorten and all that sort of stuff so yeah yeah i'm kind of surprised we didn't slip into that during this life so because i figured you'd probably start and i'd just fall straight in and they were like what are you all talking about i'm, um, I'm very very mindful of when i'm because predominantly my audience on my channel is american so i'm right. very mindful of it um and I try to to make sure that like i've been pulled up because i say gunner all the time or wanna yeah. <laughs> and that's just want to but wanna or gonna i'm yeah. going to gonna um and so yeah so i do that a lot and you hear that in my tutorials and i've been pulled up you're lovely to watch but do you really have to say gunner all the time <laughs> like i can't that's help it. it that's just how we talk <laughs> it is yeah we, we shorten everything i mean um maccas um for anyone that doesn't know is what we call mcdonald's i mean they call it mickey d's here um so it's close um yeah you know, I stole brekkie from, you know, it's short for breakfast. Um, yep. But, yeah, I mean, I don't use it as much as I used to because, obviously, I've been here 20-some 20, 20 years, so I've kind of assimilated, like you said, into the American um, culture and wording. But, yeah, there are the yep. occasional words. Like I'll say I have a chin wag with someone um, and people go, what are you talking about? And then <laughs> Dunny throws everybody off. Like, what's a Dunny? <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, every right. now and again I get a little bit lazy and I just start shortening everything and and it, and it's not even it's just the way we speak. Everything is just done really quickly and we just cut everything up and yeah. we understand each other. That's all that matters, right? <laughs> well, it's also you know up until recently, you know, we're, we're well, we're still you're still still on an island, but up until recently, you know, you didn't have the connections overseas with everybody else until we had you know video and all that sort of stuff. Like you know, so. There was no need to explain why we, mm. you know, use the words we do because no yeah. one, yeah. Does it make sense? So, oh, good morning, Becca. It is good to see you. Um, Fallon says, I would personally love it because I like learning new things. Uh, Ingrid says she loves hearing a slang in different countries. So, yeah, I mean, I don't, I just say what I say. Um, and if something comes out and someone, you know, people are always welcome to say, hey, what do you what, what did you say what do you mean and it's a good learning experience so you know you can always look at it from that 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 that, that aspect as well um 
So yeah, Becca's in. That's good. Brenda says, lovely interview. I like her, Shawnee. I do too. I mean, I've always been a big fan of the Coles ever since I met her and um, online. And I was just like, I, this is someone I'd love to have on the channel. And it's been a been a work Thank in progress. You. I think we scheduled you out like two or three months ago, I think it was. Yeah, it was a while ago now. Yeah, had to schedule it in. Um, because I'm also away in August, so I couldn't do August <laughs> and yeah. whatnot. So yeah. Yeah, so that's it's it's been great. And you know, hopefully this is not the last time we do something together. Maybe we can do another project together at some point. Um, yeah. but yeah, thank you so much for joining me. Do you have anything like just before we go? Do you have anything coming up on your channel that you'd like to tell us about? Anything exciting? Um no, uh, well, I just, as I said earlier, I post videos every day um, and it's, as I said, we do floss tube, which is uh, cross stitch and any other sort of craft that I'm doing. So if I'm learning how to do crochet, which I am, um, that happens on Monday. Tuesday is diamond painting and we're looking at having a live stream where we're doing hyper-focused um, crafting to get some of our whips out of the way. Wednesday, I have a sewing tutorial. We do have a series at the moment for those beginner quilters that want to learn how to do different blocks and whatnot. We've got an A to Z quilt block challenge happening and that's every two weeks that comes out. So the next one comes out, I want to say this coming Wednesday. Um, I don't have my calendar in front of me. And um, Thursdays, every uh, Thursday at 8 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, um, I have a live stream where I'm working stuff off my shelf because otherwise I get nothing done. <laughs> and um, I just share my tips and tricks as I'm going along the way. I'm just making some quilts at the moment. And then on Friday, I have a stitch with me, which is a whip and waffle or a whip, whip and chat, depending where you are. If you've got some UK viewers, they call it a waffle. <clears throat> and then on Saturdays, I do slow stitching Saturday and that's where you can learn about different types of embroidery in um, English paper piecing or sashiko as we discussed today. And then on Sundays, I generally do a short, which gives you a challenge. If you're a cross stitcher or an embroiderer, I give you a prompt and you find a project that you've got to work on that. Or I give you a sewing challenge, which would be making something. Um, we've had like, you know, shorts or hair ties or maybe a container or something like that. So just to push you out of your little comfort zone and that happens for a short on Sundays. And that's pretty much my channel in a nutshell. Yes. So basically what she's saying is she's got a little bit of everything. So definitely go check out the channel. Um, there's going to be something there for you, you know, whether you like your quilting or your cross stitch or the Japanese art that I can never pronounce the name of um, or anything else. So yeah, please go, please go over and um, take a look at Nicole's channel. She's a lovely lady. has a lot of fun stuff. If you like it, definitely hit the like button. We always love hearing comments from our viewers. And then if you do like what you see, um, definitely hit that subscribe button as well. She will definitely appreciate that as well. Good morning, Janine. She says, here late, better late than never. I had an early morning Bible study with the ladies at church this morning. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and Becca's here. I think we said that already. And Elena K dropped in as well. So I think we said good morning to, or good evening, depending on where you are, to everybody. We better let Nicole go because it's um, sleepy time for her because it's almost midnight. Um, but yeah, if you're still hanging around, good morning, Margie. It's good to see you. Um, yeah, if you want another live to hang out at, um, head over and check out um, Fallon at So Be It Quilt in about 25 minutes. Um, she's always a lot of fun, and her husband often pops in as well to say hi, and he's he's a lot of fun as well. And then, yeah, check out all the other um, people going out later this afternoon. Mama Pop will be on later, um, and I can't remember all the others. Um, you, you know your favorites. So, yeah. Definitely go out and support everybody. And I'll have my podcast tomorrow morning as usual. So thank you all again. It's been um, a wonderful time hanging out with Nicole. And um, I hope you'll have a wonderful day. Happy sewing. And we'll see you all next time. Bye.